Good morning and welcome to The Hub. The Hub is our family service here at WRBC. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Liam, I'm the youth worker here and it's my absolute pleasure to be leading the service today from my tent. I've come on a solo climbing camping mission to the local crag, but I'll tell you all about that later. So today we're thinking about what it means to be prepared. We're going to be looking at some people from the Bible who had to prepare for the work that God had for them. We're going to be thinking about how we as a church need to prepare for the work that God has for us. And ultimately, we're going to think about how we prepare for a time when we meet Jesus. Now, something that we didn't really feel prepared for at all is the fact that we've spent a year now with this pandemic. It was a year ago, the March Hub, which was our last service altogether. Now, I wasn't even at that because I'd had this new illness called COVID. Um, it's, well, who knew that was going to last that long? Anyway, let's put that aside because we're going to have a wonderful time together this morning. I'm going to open in a prayer and then we're going to have our first worship song, uh, which is Raise a Hallelujah. Dear God, Silence all voices within our minds but your own. Help us to seek and be able to follow your will. May our prayers be joined with those of our sisters and brothers in the faith, that together we may glorify your name and enjoy your fellowship forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's raise a hallelujah.
So what does it mean to be prepared? Well, of course, at the moment, we're in the middle of Lent. And whatever you're choosing to take up, to do, to not do, to give up, I hope that that is going really well and that it's bringing you closer to God, that it is helping you to prepare your mind and your soul for the celebration that is Easter. Now, we're going to speak a bit more about that later, but... Some of you may have noticed that I'm um, an honorary scout today. I will admit I only ever went to two scout meetings and that this isn't actually mine. But the scout motto, be prepared, I thought is perfect for our service this morning. Now when the scouts say, be prepared, what they mean is to always be in a state of readiness in mind and body to do your duty. Be prepared in mind by having disciplined yourself to be obedient to every order and also having thought out beforehand any accident or situation that might occur so you know the right thing to do at the right moment and that you're willing to do it. That you be prepared in body by making yourself strong and active and that therefore you are able to do the right thing at the right time and that you do it. I thought, that's perfect for us. Let's use that. Now, you know, I've told you I've come on my solo climbing camping mission and I've had to get loads of things ready. I've had to do loads of preparation to make sure that I'm ready for every eventuality, every situation, every possible accident. So, you know, I'm going to have to get to the crag in the morning. So I brought my approach shoes. That, that's a thing, honestly. That's a, that's a real thing. Um, I've brought my climbing shoes ready for when I get to the rock. I'm going to need some chalk for my hands. You know, I'm going to need to set up a, an escape rope just in case that everything goes wrong. So I've got, got my climbing rope. I've got my harness on ready to set up. And just in case there's any fallen rocks, I've got my helmet. And I will wear it, I promise, man, I but it's not just that. Well, actually, I can be as prepared as I want. Still might be an accident. I've got my first aid kit. Do I even know where I'm going? I've got my guidebook. I'm gonna need food. I'm gonna need drink. You know, there's so much to prepare for, and still, I might not have prepared enough. Now, in the Bible, there are many, many people who have to prepare for the work that God wants them to do. Noah, for example, didn't have an ark ready built. He had to build one in preparation for the flood that God told him was coming. There wasn't enough food saved up um, for, uh, by Joseph and the, the, the Egyptians to last them seven years. So thankfully, they had seven years of preparation, stocking up, ready for that time. Esther didn't just barge into the king and say, Oi, you, this is going on and I need you to do this. She fasted. She prayed. She prepared herself to approach the king. Um, there are many other examples. Um, Moses, his, his time in the desert before returning to Egypt, before leading the people out of Egypt. Um, John the Baptist, who prepares the way uh, for Jesus. And actually, let's not forget that the Old Testament is all preparation for Jesus. The prophecies, the, the, 
the genealogy, the, you know, the, the, the descendants of people, all lead to Jesus. And that's the wonderful, exciting thing. God has a plan and he's put it in place. And actually, we just need to do our best to do the work that he has for us. What can be quite scary is that the things that we plan for don't always go the way we expect them to. There's some very, very good advice, surprisingly, in the Bible for this. In James chapter 4, verse 13 uh, onwards, there's a warning about self-confidence. So he says, Look here, you people who say, Today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make profit. How do you know what is going to happen tomorrow? For your life is like the morning fog. It's here for a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. If the Lord wants us to. And that's massive. Now as Christians, we need to be open to following what we believe God is calling us to do. And unfortunately, God doesn't often send us a text message or invite us to a Zoom meeting. We have to discern God's will in our lives with the help of our family, with our friends, with people in church. And then we need to be obedient. And we might get it wrong. But that obedience, that willingness to do the work that we believe God wants us to do is the thing that's really important. Now, we are going to have our reading. Now, our reading is by um, Isabel Manders, and I'm really grateful for you doing that for us. So thank, you, thank you so much. Um, we're then going to go into our second worship song. After that, we're going to think about the fact that actually we are always preparing in everyday life. And actually, how can we apply some of what we do naturally to how we prepare for the work that God has for us. So, without further ado, here is Isabel. Luke 12, 35 to 40. Watchfulness. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants who master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants who master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him.
So what do we prepare for? How do we prepare? Let's be honest, we have to prepare for things every day. We have to prepare to go to school, to go to work, make sure that we have everything we need for when we get there. We have to make a shopping list for before we go shopping so we don't buy loads of rubbish, like I do. Um, if we're going to bake something or follow a recipe, we want to make sure that we have all the ingredients we need before we start. Again, I don't always do this. And then there are things that take longer in preparation. The hours of practice or revision that we might spend on uh, for a performance or for an exam, the, the hours of training to get our personal best in a sport. And then as we get older, actually preparation increases. For those of you who are sort of in, you know, sort of younger years in secondary school, well, you're going to be doing options, you know, choosing options for GCSEs that you hope will lead you onto the right A levels that you hope will lead you onto the right course at university, which you hope will lead to the job that you want to do now at 13, 14. There's a lot to prepare for. And whether we know it or not, we are always preparing for something. And as a church, this is very, very true. On a Sunday morning, uh, in normal times, uh, the service takes so much Preparation, so much planning. Simon is planning his sermon. We're making sure that people are on the rotors for, for welcome, for coffee shop, for collection, for flowers. We, we're being prepared for the groups that we run upstairs, making sure we have enough volunteers to run the children's groups, mini zone. A lot of preparation, a lot of work, a lot of joy. And as a church, the preparation we're doing at the moment is so important. We are planning for life after this pandemic. It's an exciting time for us. It has been a forced opportunity to stop and to reflect on all the things that we do and actually to, to really listen, to discern where we think God wants us to go as a church, the work that he has planned for us. And of course, this preparation isn't just done by Simon and myself, Debbie and Lisa. It's done by us as a church, collectively. It is our opportunity to, to shape what the church is going to be doing, to shape how we are going to live out our collective vision for being hope in the heart of our community. Be involved in that. Be a voice in that. This is an exciting time, which has been also been a really, really hard time. But we have an opportunity to do something new and fresh, to get the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ out to those who don't yet know it. Now, next week, next Sunday, do you know what, what Sunday is next week? I can hear you screaming, Palm Sunday! I love Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday's wicked. When I was little, I used to love the, the getting the palm crosses. I love that picture of people just laying them on the floor as Jesus goes into Jerusalem, preparing the way for the king. Now, next week, we're not at church still. But we want you to have your palm crosses. So I'm going to hand over to Lisa, who is going to lead us in our craft, so that next week we are prepared to make way for the king and we will have palm crosses. Take it away, Lisa. We're going to make our palm crosses as part of this uh, month's hub service. So you'll need two strips of paper. I've used yellow because it looks a bit more like our palm crosses, but you can use white. That's, that's absolutely fine. So this is quite tricky to video because I can't, <laughs> I can't aim the camera angle right. And also I'm having to do it back to front in the air. So I recommend you use a table. So we're gonna put our two strips of paper. I used a guillotine because if you've got the, if you've got them quite straight, it's much easier to feed through. So we're going to put the top part over. And it's very important to get this bit right because as I've discovered about 10 times of, of videoing this, uh, it doesn't quite work. And then we're going to fold the side bit in. 
then it's this bottom part goes up first and fold it like that and then the side bit comes over okay so we've got this part here then we're going to turn it over and you will see well you should we've got a little pocket there look like that look and you can so you need to where your little pocket is you need to feed that piece of paper as you can see it's much easier we're going to feed this part all the way through and then we are going to feed that same one back through and we're not going to squash this part down yet just because we can fiddle about with it so then as i said it's quite tricky to do in the air <laughs> in a yeah, using my camera and little tripod. Um, so then we're going to sort of, I'm going to fiddle about with it. So it, ooh, it's not very, as I can, see, as you can see, it's not. But we just need to tuck that bit in under. Oh, I think I've gone a bit. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, a bit straight. Then we're going to turn it back round, and this bottom bit we're going to thread back through. There we go, like that. And then when you're happy that you've got, mine's not completely straight. Uh, and then we're gonna squash that back down. And there you have a palm cross. Easier said than done, I can assure you, <laughs> because I've had quite a lot of attempts at doing it. Um, as I've said, it's much harder doing it in the air and on camera. So please get yourself a table. I'm gonna put mine, in the, I'm going to make a few more. I'm just put some in the window, just so that we can show people that Jesus loved us so much that He died on a cross for us. Uh, and you can even, if you've got like white paper, well, any colour paper, we can you can decorate them and write little messages on them as well. So enjoy making your crosses, and you might have to watch this more than once to. It, it, it took me a few times to get it right. Um, so enjoy. And if you've done your palm crosses, it would be great if you could send myself or Liam a picture of them and then we can share those with other people. Bye. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yeah, I hope you all enjoy making those palm crosses in preparation for Palm Sunday next week as we hear that wonderful story of people preparing the way for Jesus um, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Now, super quickly, I'm going to go back to our reading that Isabel beautifully read to us earlier and just talk about quickly the, the context that the disciples would have heard these words in, the words of preparing for your master. Now, we hear it in the light of Easter, but actually Easter's not happened uh, when, when um, Jesus is telling the disciples this story. So what he's doing is he's preparing them for a crisis and that crisis is easter he's telling them to be ready for something dramatic to happen and to know that actually if they're ready then he the master will honor it will serve them which he does and of course knowing that easter happens what do we hear what do we learn from that piece of scripture well actually it's massively important we learn that actually Lent is not just about preparing our hearts and minds to remember Easter. It's about preparing our hearts and minds for when Jesus comes again. For when we meet Jesus, whether, in, uh, whether he comes during our lifetime or if we meet him when we die. We need to know that we have prepared ourselves to meet the king of the universe. But also... We have to remember that we are commissioned. We are given the, the massive, massive responsibility and a wonderful responsibility to tell others about Jesus to, so others can be ready for him. That's not just think about ourselves. We want, Jesus came for all people, for all of humanity. Let's make sure that we share that good news with everyone. And that can be done in different ways, but let's make sure that the living water that that is in us because we are believers in christ is able to to be seen by everyone we meet through everything that we do 
it's a wonderful opportunity uh, for us. So yeah, as we approach Easter, let's remember, yes, we're, we're mourning the, uh, his death on the cross on the Friday. We're celebrating his resurrection and triumph over sin and death on um, Easter Sunday. But we're also looking forward expectantly to that time where we get to be in his presence. We want to be right with him when that happens. Wonderful. Right, so I'm going to leave you now with the last worship song of the morning, which is, quite fittingly, One Way, One Way Jesus. See you in a sec. Okay, so we've come to the end of our hub video service. I hope that you've enjoyed yourselves. Um, I've enjoyed making it for you as always. I'm gonna finish with a prayer and then I'm gonna go and get myself out to the crag for a quick climb. Almighty God, we pray for your blessing on the church in this place. Here may the faithful find salvation and the careless be awakened. Here may the doubting find faith and the anxious be encouraged. Here may the tempted find help and the sorrowful find comfort. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be renewed. Here may the aged find consolation and the young be inspired. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Hope to see you all, in, well, some of you in person in a few weeks on Easter Sunday. 
take care and have a good rest of Lent, preparing your hearts and your minds for all that is to come. Help the church prepare for the, what's coming next. We need to do this together. Wonderful. Right, love you. God bless. See you later. Bye-bye.